Hello and welcome. My name is Trey Bremer. Today I'm going to go over the 6920 IP phone with you. Uh, we're going to go over its basic features, kind of give you the lay of the land, make sure you understand how to uh, perform all the functions that you're used to, like transfer and conference. And I'm going to briefly go over the voicemail with you so you know how that works. So let's get started. Here's a few things to remember. The first thing is you'll need to dial a nine for an outside line. So uh, anytime you're dialing outbound, nine first, and you'll need to dial the area code as well as the phone number for all your outbound calls. So area code, phone number, nine first. Uh, you will not need a one before dialing long distance or 800 anymore, but if you are just too used to doing that that you, you can't help yourself, it, it'll still work, but you won't need, need it anymore. And then the default password uh, to hot desk into a phone which is a feature I'll show you. And also for your voicemail itself is the same as your extension number by default. But um, once you set up your voicemail, it'll also change your hot desk pin as well as your voicemail pin. So we'll talk about that as we go. I know that one's a little confusing off the bat, but that's a feature that we'll kind of be talking about is hot desk. Here's the uh, 6920 IP phone. Uh, the basic lay of the land is the top part is you have your display and on the left hand side of the display you have those staggered keys which will uh, line up to the different buttons that we've added to the phone. Uh, the, there's four buttons on the below which line up to the soft key area which is kind of dynamic. When a call comes in, it'll change what it says there, and it'll offer you things like transfer and conference and uh, answer and that sort of thing. So as we go through it, you'll see. You'll also notice there's a little silver circle. That's a navigation key. That's going to help you navigate through some of the different uh, features that we offer on this phone. Uh, there's a directory, and you'll that'll come into play uh, for the directory as well as call history. Uh, so you'll use that navigation. And, and as I'm going through the phone, if you're going to be using that navigation key, I'll let you know. So you'll kind of have an idea. Let's talk about the uh, navigation key itself. It's a silver round and you'll notice there's a little circle inside of it. The way it's broken down is that uh, the outside ring go will allow you to scroll left, right, up or down. And then the very center is a select key. Uh, so if you're, for an example, if you're going into your call history and you scroll over to a phone number you want to redial, then you can hit the select key once you've highlighted it and it will dial the, the phone number. So it's just a quick way to kind of scroll and select. <clears throat> Hot desking, that's a feature we talked about earlier into a phone. Um, it's something, it's a feature that's available, but it's something you don't have to use every day. It isn't available on every phone in the operation, but it is available on quite a few. The way the hot desking works is that you can take over someone's phone. Say you have a big project and you there's an uh, open space where you can work. You could go in there and basically hot desk or take over that phone and it would have your extension number now listed on it as well as all your buttons that you have pre-programmed. So that's what hot desking does. The idea is that if there was an emergency, you could move to another office or something and take over a phone in that office and be able to receive your calls. Hot desking, if it is a feature that you don't have to use, but if you're ever in a situation where maybe the power goes out for an extended amount of time and maybe it logs your phone out, or maybe you've logged out, someone has taken over your phone for the day and you wanna log back into it. This is what your phone would look like if you were not logged into it. Um, a couple little key indicators are that the first thing starting at the top, your extension number will have a pound in it. That's to indicate that you are not, that's not your real extension yet, you're logged out of it. It also says locked in the center of the display. Okay, and then the last thing it will do is, um, say hot desk rather than say log out. So these are all indicators to let you know that this phone is not logged into. And it also will only allow you to dial 911 or the operator. You can't dial an extension from it. You can't receive any inbound calls. So you need to go ahead and log into this phone. Um, these phones should be hot desk into for you when you are sitting at your desk uh, for the first time. But this is a feature and if someone misses you, misses it and you, you're not logged in, you could easily log in yourself. The process is pretty easy. First thing you wanna do is hit the hot desk key. When you hit the hot desk key, it's gonna ask you to enter your extension number. You can see there's a backspace and an enter button. So if I put in the wrong number, I can backspace rather than start over again. 
Once I have my extension number in, I'll hit enter. And then it's going to ask for my pin. Your pin by default is the same as your extension number. So I just put my extension number in another time. But once you set up your voicemail, it'll be whatever you set up your voicemail to be. So once you set up your voicemail, say you set it up as one, two, three, four, then that'll also be your pin for your hot desk. So you only have to remember one number. Once I put in my pin, I'll hit enter and it'll bring up my phone to look like it normally does. This is what your phone should look like. There's, you'll notice up top, there's no pound in the extension number anymore. And also you'll notice across the top, there's a little fella up there now that is indicating uh, that you are logged in. So that's what, what he stands for. Uh, you will notice little, um, little uh, icons come up and the top blue area, you can't select those. They're just indicators to let you know things. Uh, one of the things that's telling you with, you'll see a circle with the four in it and a little ricochet arrow and a line underneath it. That just means you miss four calls. Um, and then the little boxes just means you're on the network. So let's start at the top of the phone and work our way down. First of all, um, after the extension number on the left-hand side, you can see it says my phone. And then it says line two, that's your line one and two. It says my phone by default, but when a call comes in, it'll replace where it says my phone with the caller identification number. Um, so it's only this way while the phone is idle. Line two is there if you're on a call and another call comes in, line two will show caller identification information. It'll give you a little ring indicator and the, light, and the uh, buttons next to the uh, line two there will blink to let you know when inbound calls coming in. Below that, is D and D, which stands for do not disturb. Do not disturb is a way to turn your phone off for inbound call traffic. Um, you'll notice when it's on, it'll highlight where it said do not disturb in red. It also puts an indicator up in your tray to let you know you are in do not disturb. Uh, so that way, when you come back to your desk, you'll remember to turn it off. So it basically just shuts your phone off from ringing and sends everything straight to voicemail. So you can see where it'd be a nice feature to have if you're on vacation or gone for the day or you go to lunch. Uh, other people in the office won't have to hear your phone ring uh, when you're in Do Not Disturb. Uh, then below that, you have some blank keys uh, that will allow you to, you can program those to be an outside number, an internal extension. There is a handful of other features available. I'll show you that here in a second. And then you'll notice if we move over to this more center area over to the right hand side, you'll notice it has the uh, time and the date that'll always show up. There's a blank area that will show caller identification name and number not just a number like it does where it says my phone, but it'll show name and number. Or if it's internal, it'll show you the person's name and extension number. Uh, that'll replace the um, redial when, when, that's, when you're on a live call. Uh, on the soft keys down below where it says redial, you'll see that there's a soft key that says redial. When you hit that, it's dialing the number displayed there. And log out will log you out of this phone, so you'll have to hot desk into it again if you ever log out. Uh, you don't have to log out of this phone to log in somewhere else. Once you go to another phone and log into that phone, it automatically will log you out of your, hot, your phone here. So anytime you log in one place, it'll take it away from here and it'll say locked on it when you come back to your desk and you just log in to take it back over. <clears throat> okay. You'll notice down below there's two little buttons, a uh, little blue uh, circle and a blank circle. That's just indicating there's multiple pages on this phone. If you use the navigation key and scroll uh, to your right, it'll scroll to uh, some more blank buttons for you to be able to program. To program these buttons is a, like, a lot like it is in your car. You just hold the key down, you know, the, one of these staggered keys next to a blank space, hold it down for a few seconds and it'll pop up on your display. Um, this uh, programmable key. All you, then you can label it the way you want using the keys on the telephone. You can spell out you know, the name. You can see down below, you can backspace or you can capitalize the letters if you prefer. Uh, but you just scroll through the number until you get to the right letter and uh, you can name, you know, mom or whatever you want to put in there. Then you use a navigation key to go down and then you put the phone number. If it's an outside line, remember to put it in like you dial it, nine area code and phone number. And then there is also the ability to make it private. What private just means is that it'll show the label, but it will not show the phone number. So if I want to put my home phone number on here, uh, but I don't want people going past my desk seeing what my home phone number is, I can mark it as private and people won't see it. 
Okay. There is other features available. You could see if I use, I'm, I'm on speed call right now, but if I scroll down on the left hand side one more, I would move to other features and it's just a bunch of basic stuff. Uh, call forward always is a key you could set up if you plan on forwarding your phone to another person internally. Uh, then I could have a button for that to turn it on and off. Um, do not disturb, you already have that key, and mobile line and account verification, you won't ha have to worry about. That's for uh, if you have additional features like ACD features, which you won't have on these phones. Okay. And then more just will give you the, the identity of the phone, uh, just tells you uh, the make and the model of the phone. Incoming phone calls or incoming com, uh, intercom calls, they look the same. So let's let's see what it looks like when a call comes in. Here comes a phone call, like I was telling you earlier where it said my, my uh, phone, it now has the caller identification information. This will actually be ringing at this point and blinking uh, the, the key next to it. Um, you can see that it shows you the caller ID. You no longer see redial or that option, but you do see that the soft key at the bottom now indicates answer. If you pick up the handset, that's also answering. Answer here is if you were wearing a headset, um, then you can answer on the headset, but otherwise you're just gonna pick up the handset. Once you have picked up the call, it's gonna change the display to offer you things down below. Immediately a timer, of how long the phone has been in the system. We'll start uh, counting down. You can see it's at 21 seconds here. Um, the caller ID will stay with the line and uh, it'll offer you up uh, options down below. One is transfer. This is if I want to send this call to someone else in the organization, I would use the transfer key. Add user means I'm setting up a conference call and end call just hangs up on it. And you would mostly only use the end call one if you were wearing a headset. So most of you would end the call by just hanging up the uh, handset into the cradle and it would hang up. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about transferring a call first. So here's that same call in there. And now I wanna go ahead and transfer it. So I'll press the transfer key. I'll enter your extension, dial your extension. And then I press the transfer key again and it'll transfer that call to you. Okay, if I dial in the, when I hit transfer the first time and I dial your extension, I will hear your phone internally ring if I'm trying to transfer it to you. If you can pick up the phone and we can have a private conversation before I hit the transfer key to send the call to you, or I could go ahead and hit transfer right away. It would send the call to your phone and then go to your voicemail if you don't pick it up. So depending on how quickly you hit the transfer key again, will determine if you're announcing it to somebody or just sending it to them. You'll notice that display also changes uh, for other options as well. I have the ability to hit transfer and complete the transfer, but I could change my mind. I could go, go back to held. That's the, the uh, on the soft key down below. That'll take me back to the original caller and I could uh, start over again. So let's just say I hit transfer. I dialed your extension. You pick up the phone and I said, I have ABC company. Would you like to talk to him? And you said, no, I'm going into a meeting. Can you tell him to call me back? Then I could go hit the back to held button and go back to the original caller and I could say, I'm sorry, not available. Can you call back in an hour? Uh, and I, that cancels out the transfer I started. Then I would have to start again if I wanted to send it to somebody else. You'll notice also there's a thing called join calls. That's the ability to set up a conference call. So let's just say I intended to transfer this. So I hit transfer, I dialed your extension. And when I got a hold of you, you said, hey, stay on the line and add this other person on. I, I could hit join calls. We'd all three be talking uh, together then. Uh, so it's a way for us to all join the calls. And the other feature you'll see on there is trade calls. What that means is it's the ability for me not to cancel the transfer, but to jump back to the original caller. Let's just say the scenario is uh, this ABC company is calling in. They ask for you. I hit transfer. I dial your extension. You get on the line. I say, hey, ABC company's on for you. And you said, well, who with ABC company is it? Can you tell me before you transfer them? Oh, sure. I could hit trade calls. It'll take me back to the original caller. I could say, I'm sorry, who are you with? Uh, you're with ABC company. What's your name? Get the name. I hit trade calls again. I go back to, to, the, to you and I say, it's Joe with ABC company. Okay, send him through. Then I can hit transfer and complete it. So these other options that you see available there are just to help you if something changes between you transferring it 
and you needing to do something else because scenarios come up where you might not be able to transfer it because the person you dialed the wrong extension or the person said please don't send them to me or whatever it is so those are some little tools available for you when you're doing the transfer this transfer works the same if you're doing someone internal or outside so you could even practice you could have someone internally call you and then you could transfer them to somebody else and kind of see how it works it's good to get a little practice in on, on it on it but that's how that works Making a conference call, you could see uh, when we're doing the transfer, we could change our mind and go right to setting up a conference call. So you'll notice there's a lot of similarities. And matter of fact, you could just hit transfer to set up a conference call. And then when we get to the next screen, I could just add, add user. But this way, it kind of keeps you straight. So in this case, ABC company, uh, either I called them or they called me and we're going to set up a conference call with you. So I'm going to hit add user as a soft key. And then I can go ahead and if I change my mind, I could hit dial your, you know, I've dialed your extension. I could hit transfer. But in this case, I've dialed your extension and we're going to hit join calls. And once I hit join calls, uh, we'll all be connected together. And you'll notice that trade calls and back to held are still there. So if I need to jump back to somebody and talk to them before I connect us all, I could do that. Or I can cancel the whole thing out by hitting back to held. It'll jump back. Now, if you can have up to seven people in yourself, so eight people total on a conference call. So once you get a few people on, when you hit back to held, it'll jump back to where the conference call was uh, when you try to add a person in. So if you had four or five people on and I hit back to held, it just cancels the person I'm trying to add in. So hopefully that makes sense. But you can also conference uh, internal and outside people on this. So if you wanted to just give it a, uh, you know, call people internally, just join together, you'll see how that works. Once you uh, conference everyone together, it'll say on your display, three-party conference, and we're all connected together. Once you have a three-party conference set up, I can transfer this still to somebody else and in the organization. Let's just say I set it up for you guys, but I, um, didn't want to stay on the call, then I could hit transfer and send it to somebody else I was setting the conference call up for. Maybe you're my supervisor and I need to set that up for you. Uh, I could also continue to add users. So I can do the scenario again where I hit add user. I go ahead and dial another extension number or an outside number and add that user in. I also have the ability to split. What split means is that it'll split everybody off onto their own line. The reason for this would be something along the lines of we're all on this conference together and um, you're saying something you shouldn't say. I could hit split and then I would be able to maneuver to each, I would hit, it would change the display to say trade call and I could trade call until I found you and say, you know, shut up, don't say that. Or I can leave the call. So this would be a scenario where I'm setting up a conference call for you and I'm gonna get off of it or I've been on it for a while and I need to now leave. I can hit leave call and that'll cancel me out of the conference but leave the conference going, okay? So there's your conference. Let's kind of talk about the keys on either side of the keypad so you know what everything does. Uh, we're gonna start on the left-hand side. We'll start at the top and work our way down. So the first one is your contacts key. Contacts are going to either be personal, those are ones that you've added in yourself, uh, or corporate. Um, you will see no personal contacts in there until you've created one. You can create one two different ways. Uh, you can create one by um, going to your call history and adding someone as a contact, or you can just build a brand new one, add new, and that would allow you to type in a name, type in the phone number, and all that good stuff, okay? So those are personal, and as you have them, um, you can start typing in a name uh, and first or last name alphabetically on the personal contacts and we'll bring them up. The other one is a corporate contact. Corporate contacts will be only visible when you start typing in a name. So you'll hit search, and then you at least have to put the first letter of the last name. Corporate contact is done by last name only, and obviously the more letters of the last name you put in there, the closer it's going to get. If you put in one, like just B, it'll bring up everything that matches with B, and then I could use my navigation key to scroll down. I would move over from corporate over to the list, and then I could scroll down until I found the right person. Then I could go ahead and hit the center or hit dial when I find the person that I've scrolled to. Uh, so you'll notice when you go to corporate, it's blank. And it confuses a lot of people because they're like, wait, where are all the people? Well, you got to at least put a letter of the last name in there to be able to find somebody. Good exercise is to hit search 
and put in your last name, at least one letter of your last name and scroll over and, and you kind of get the idea of how it works. If you continue to scroll over in corporate, it'll show you other information that they may have added in. Uh, maybe their mobile number, you can add that in as your personal contact. Um, so if I ever go to my personal contacts and I need to add somebody, um, I would just go ahead and keep scrolling over to the right and then I would see more information or I could add more information uh, about that. And you can see if there's an edit key that you're able to get into and add phone numbers as you go along, that kind of thing. Okay. Call history, uh, that's gonna give you a detailed call history. It'll show you all the calls that came in. This is a listing of 20, uh, 20 caller IDs, so it's not a whole day's worth, but it gives you a good idea of who's called you recently. Um, you have an all calls, you can separate them out by ones that you've missed, ones that are, you've dialed, and ones that you've received. Uh, you Again, this navigation key comes into play where I'll scroll to the right to highlight somebody in the caller ID. If I scroll over to highlight somebody, then I would be able to add them as a contact and that would add them to my personal contacts. So if someone calls in, I can go to my call history and say, oh, that's an important person. I'm gonna go ahead and add that person into my personal contacts. And it's as easy as scrolling over or finding the person and adding them to contacts. And then you can modify it and add cell phone numbers and that sort of thing. And you can dial them, of course. So that's another way you can do it, okay? This is the voicemail key. It'll allow you to access your voicemail. Remember the default pin it'll ask for will be the same as your extension. And this will take you through a tutorial that will help you set up the rest of your voicemail. It'll help you add a name, your name, uh, a greeting and change your passcode. Once your passcode is changed here, this is when you're going to go ahead and use this new passcode for your hot desking as well. So kind of figure out what's best for you as a pin number and then um, that's what you'll be using to access your voicemail and if you ever need to hot desk into a phone or hot desk back into your own phone. This is your settings key. Uh, this is where all the setup happens on the phone. Uh, we'll kind of go through the most common ones so you uh, know where to go and take a peek at uh, if you need to adjust the phone. Here's uh, some of the common settings. You got call forward. You, you remember when we went and held down the button, one of those blank keys uh, on the phone, it'll, it did offer you call forward. You could do a turn on and off button for what you set up here, but you can go to uh, call forwarding, set up call forwarding. You can change the audio, which means that you can change the ringtone of the phone because <clears throat> uh, by default it's kind of sing-songy. So if you need a more traditional type ring or a different ring, you could go to the audio to do that. And then the display is another place you might want to look. So let's kind of talk about each of those. Uh, first one is your call forwarding. Pretty easy if you want to set this up. Uh, all you have to do is like you would um, setting up one of those buttons, put in nine area code and phone number, and you could, or you could put in an extension number and you can forward uh, your phone to another destination. Um, if you do do this, it's unlike Do Not Disturb, um, where it'll go to your voicemail, it'll actually ring somewhere else. So like a cell phone or another extension. If someone leaves the organization and you wanna forward their phones to like the attendant, this is a good way to do it. Um, you could see below that, It'll ask you for busy internal, busy external. Those are conditional forwarding. You could say things like, if I don't answer for an internal call, have it go to a different number. So you can get really complex on this. But for simple forwarding, you just put the phone number in here. And then on the phone itself, you hold down the button and you program it as a call forward always button. And then that button will allow you to turn this on and off. Okay. <clears throat> the next key on here is your audio and the audio is going to allow you to do different ring for internal calls, someone calling extension to extension, or external, which is an outside call ringing in. You could do two different sound, sounding rings. The other thing you can do on this is, um, obviously you can make your ring a little different than the person next to you. So when you're at the copier, you get used to, copier, you get used to your own ring. Uh, you can, all you have to do is scroll over using the navigation key over to the names of the rings. It'll start playing those tones. You can just scroll down until you find the tone you like. And then you hit save and it'll save that ring for you. So pretty easy to set up. The other thing is your display. You may want to adjust that the way you do. You, this is a screen saver that you'll see pop up. Um, by default, it's pretty quick. I think like uh, 
five minutes, it'll come to this display. If you don't want that, you can adjust it up. Uh, and that's part of this display settings. There's two kinds of display settings. One is brightness. You can adjust the brightness of the display. So if your display looks a little dim, just go into the settings here, go to display, and you can adjust that brightness display. The other thing is that screensaver. Uh, by default, it's five minutes. You can put it all the way up to, I think, 155 minutes or maybe uh, 130 minutes. So put in the amount of time. You would you know, max it out if you can. And you can also change how it dims if you'd like. Uh, you, know, you can adjust that. What happens basically is <clears throat> it'll go to the screensaver and then it'll dim the display so it makes it a little hard to see. But all you have to do is press any button on the phone to wake it up. But some people don't like it, so that's a place you can adjust that. Okay, this is your volume control. Each piece of volume is separate. If you pick up the handset, you're adjusting the handset volume. Uh, if you turn on the speaker, you're adjusting the speaker volume. If you wait for an inbound call to come in before picking it up, you can hit this and it will adjust how it rings. Everything by default is dead center. So um, it's basically you have a little ways to go up, you have a little ways to go down. So whatever you prefer. The other side of the uh, phone, you can you notice the first part is more settings, you know, like it has some features there called history, um, contacts, uh, get to my voicemail, some settings, that kind of thing. On this side, it's more call handling. You notice on the display, we, as we were going through the phone earlier, it offered you transfer, uh, it offered you um, conference calling, but it didn't offer you things like mute and that sort of thing. So this is where you'll find the additional features. So all those are housed on the right hand side. We'll start at the top again. The first one is hang up. Seems like a weird key to have, but what it is for is if you were wearing a headset, uh, you would have a key that you could hit to release the call basically. Uh, you won't need it if you're not wearing a headset. And these phones don't support a Mitel headset, but you could get a wired headset. Uh, and plug it into it, or when it may be a variety of wireless headsets that are out there, um, but it won't Bluetooth to it. No Bluetooth headsets, but um, if you wear a headset, that's a good way to hang up and pick up, but otherwise um, you probably won't use that key much. The next one is redial list. Now you notice when we were talking about the phone earlier on the display, it said redial and it had a number there and it had a button for redial. This will actually take you to a list uh, so maybe it's not the last call, but the second call that you dialed out you want to get to. So all it's really doing is taking you to the call history list, but uh, on the outgoing. So it'll bring your list of outgoing. So in that, in that case, if you need to dial somebody, uh, you could scroll over using your navigation key and go to the second or third person rather than just the last call you made. The next key, it looks like a little uh, pause there, is the hold key. When you place a call on hold, you'll press this button. It'll look like this on your display. It'll actually be blinking kind of uh, where you see the little yellow pause. It'll kind of in, uh, kind of fluctuate between the uh, pause and the yellow and the white. And also, uh, so that's your indicator to let you know. All you have to do to uh, release it off hold is to hit the key uh, and, it'll, and you'll recover the call. So it's a hold. Uh, you'll use this when uh, if another call comes in, you want to grab it but you don't have to hit the hold key to do that. So let's just say I'm on a call and another call comes in um, and I see it appear there on line two. I could just hit line two's key. It'll automatically put the first caller on hold. So I could say, hey, hold on and just hit the second line. So it'll save you a step, but if you hit the hold, it works also. So that was your hold key. The next one is mute. Um, it'll mute if you're on the handset or the speaker. Uh, mute is a toggle, just hit it to turn it on. You can hear them still, they can't hear you. Hit it once more and you're back in the call. It lights up when it's muted. And then the next key down is your speaker or headset key. If you're using a headset, um, you can use this key to answer the phone. Um, and then up top is where you would hang up. Uh, but you could also use it just for speaker phone if you need to answer a call on speaker. Okay. Uh, the voicemail, uh, the default, just one more time. I've said a couple times, but I'll tell you one more time. The default uh, mailbox pin is the same as your extension, but once you set up the voicemail, your hot desk pin will match it. So that's something important to keep in mind. Your voicemail pin will determine your number for your hot desk. Here's a basic layout that's available out there for you as well on how the voicemail works. Um, just wanted to kind of give you a, a basic lay of the land here. 
the box area is just indicating all the different ways you can get into your voicemail. For you guys, you got a key on your phone, you'll just basically hit the key, you pick up the handset, press the key, dial your uh, passcode. It'll ask for it, it'll say, please enter your PIN. You'll put in your PIN number or passcode and uh, it, it's in the voicemail. There's not a lot of mystery involved because it tells you everything you need to know. Um, away from your desk, it'll let you access your voicemail uh, by hitting the voicemail key, but instead of putting your PIN in, you'll hit uh, the star key, then you'll enter your extension number, and then you'll hit the star key again, and it'll ask for your passcode and you can get in. So if you're in a conference room or if you're in someone at someone else's desk. From the outside, mostly you're, you can call into the main number. If you hear anything automated, the automated attendant, you can hit star during that. Um, then you will go ahead and put in your extension number and then hit star again and it'll ask for your passcode and you're in. So obviously the easiest way is just to do it from your own desk. But um, if you're outside and you need to get to it, you have to do what you have to do. Uh, you'll hear things uh, that refer to DID numbers. Those are direct inward dial numbers. Um, for the most part, you, you guys don't have those. So you can't call your own number and get to your own voicemail. So you'll probably go through the auto attendant if you're outside uh, to get to it or get transferred to voicemail. Once you're in, Really, you have three things you can do. You can play messages, you can make a message to send to somebody, or you can go into your user options and change things like your greeting, your name, your passcode. You can listen to the whole tutorial again. You'll never do that. Uh, but those are things you can do uh, when you go into your um, voicemail. The uh, This sheet's out, uh, going to be available to you, and the main thing to note is um, to play messages is seven, but underneath are some cheats. Uh, just a real quick one. Really, the big one is that you can back up in uh, three, uh, five second increments uh, to listen to it. Rewind is star. So if I'm listening to a message and someone says, call me back at three, four, five, five, four, four, or something like that real fast, I can hit star. It'll back it up so I can listen to it again. Um, so that's just a little cheat that's available to you. But otherwise, it's pretty easy. It'll it'll walk you through. It'll say to play the messages, press the P or seven key, you push seven, it's playing it. Um, you have the ability to answer back the person who has sent you the message. It'll look at caller identification. You can give the messages that you're listening to to another user. You can keep them or you can delete or discard them. Uh, so pretty easy um, to maneuver through that. And there's no mystery, it'll tell you. Um, when you're making a message, you have two ways of doing that. You could do it from here by hitting uh, six or the M key um, and put in the person's mailbox number and record a message and then send it to their extension. Um, or you can just call their extension and you'll go to voicemail and you can leave a message. But let's just say you know they're in a meeting in their office and you need to leave them a message. You could go through your voicemail to do that. So I just want to give you this basic lay of the land on the voicemail. So hopefully that helps you maneuver through your new phone. Um, just kind of gives you the, a brief overview of how the phone works. And um, there are additional supporting documents out there if you need those. Um, they're handy, you know, quick reference, which will tell you very quickly how to transfer a call or a full manual that might tell you a little more in depth uh, than what we just went over. So good luck with your new phone system and thank you for attending.